that just like that we're live we're live everybody uh welcome to uh, linked up on linkedin i'm peter clark red tv and uh hope everyone's doing well out there uh for number one uh thank you for joining us we are live on linkedin we're live on youtube facebook twitter twitch and anything.com just go out and check it out i bet you're out there somewhere we're doing something hey listen uh i'm pretty pumped <laughs> i know i always say that and I, I just am because I love what I do and I love the people I get a chance to meet. Look at that good looking fellow right over there. Uh, I get a chance to talk with people, leaders in the community, leaders around the world, business leaders and so on. And it's just so much fun to, to talk to people about their journey. So we have the president, not, not the guy, like the guy, the guy, President Shane Home, uh, group, uh, Shane Home Group of Companies, uh, award-winning home builder, multifamily uh, builder, land developer. They founded in uh, 1979. So they're doing something right, okay? So they're doing something right. Very respected here in Canada, uh, Alberta specifically. Uh, I think close to 13,000 new homes built, okay? Not two or three, 13,000. So, uh, and they're very active in, in the Calgary area uh, as we speak. This guy's a world traveler, adventurer, good shape too. Uh, known to jump out of planes in South Africa and spends a lot of time in his happy place, or tries to, in Montana, just so you know. Uh, very active guy. Uh, I love that. Stays healthy. He's a promoter of all that. But you know what? He's also known to have the odd scotch and cigar and even a Croatian vodka and Coke every now and then, just so you know. So we're throwing it all around the place. Uh, uh, even has a, a live-in hairstylist. And you'll see his haircut in a second, so you'll know why. He's a business leader, community leader, philanthropist, and now a thought leader here on LinkedIn. So can you believe it or not? Look at Shane Wenzel. How are you? I'm phenomenal. I'm phenomenal. What can I say? <laughs> well, I just listed it all. You are phenomenal. I just listed it. <laughs> it's on the internet. It must be true. <laughs> well, yeah, it must be at this point. <laughs> <laughs> My friend, it's so good to finally meet you. We, we've we never met before, everybody. We just met just a couple of minutes ago before we went on. And uh, I see you on LinkedIn. So this is why I reached out to you because... I, I live in the same community as you do, uh, generally speaking. And uh, so I, I know your company and I know who you are, but um, I just started seeing you on on LinkedIn and uh, you started putting out this really cool thought leadership stuff and community centric stuff. And I was like, wow, this is really cool content. I said, what's this home builder guy talking all this really cool stuff? I got to reach out to him. So uh, kudos to you. And I'm so uh, glad to connect with you. Uh, first question, always you, your family and everyone else healthy, everyone okay? everybody's healthy everybody's okay oh man that's fantastic you got your health you got everything right so that's uh, the biggest thing right it is so it is absolutely that uh, in, indeed we have so much to cover today people uh i don't even know where to start uh but i'm going to start right here linkedin make sure you can uh, check out shane there there's how you um, connect with uh, shane and by the way shane we're going to get your address changed here and make it more specific and get rid of those numbers for you okay i'll help you with that for so sure we'll get yeah, we're going to get that. So, so, but th there he is right there. Check him out. Uh, reach out to him, uh, not only for thought leadership, but he actually can build your next house. So it's just something to think about uh, for, for everybody out there. <laughs> just, just throwing it out there. I love, uh, you know plug. I love it. <laughs> yeah, you know, not an infomercial, no, no infomercial here, everybody. Uh, but I definitely want uh, to make sure that we understand the context of who he is and what he does. Cause you, you have a legacy. You've built a great company. Your dad has built a great company and you just, mm -hmm. You've amplified it and so on. So you know what? I hope you don't mind, but I think what we should do or what I want to do is play a, click, uh, a quick little video clip that I found. I did a quick little editing to it so that I could uh, keep it nice and short. But I think it puts it into context For sure. of your story of who you are, where you came from, and then it'll make sense as we, as we go along. So if you would bear with me on this and everybody watching right now, Absolutely. let's watch a quick little clip and we'll come back and we'll chat with the one and only, the one and only. Shane Wetzel. We'll be right back. Watch this, everybody.
Someone asked me the other day, how many homes have you built? It would be well in excess of uh, 10,000, more than likely 12 to 13,000. So it's a pretty good sized city that we've built. I grew up in Mesnat actually, which was a nice little town of uh, about 20,000 people at the time. I didn't come from a well-to-do family. My mother was a stay-at-home mom, uh, but she was a seamstress. Uh, she used to make the most beautiful uh, bridal gowns you've ever seen. My grandfather was a mechanic by trade, but you know, when he finished up working during the day and the evenings, he'd, uh, he'd go and he'd build uh, basements out of cinder blocks in Medicine Hat. He'd bring my father and his brother along to do that with him. Somebody says to me, you know, do you know how to build a house? Yes, I did. <laughs> From what I know of him as a kid, he uh, he was a constant go-getter. He was a sports kid. He was always doing something. I had the largest paper route in Medicine Hat. I had 150 papers. You know that Mrs. Sullivan still owes me 25 cents down there? And I still remember, I'll never forget her till the day I die. She didn't pay me. She stiffed me. But met her in a bar, believe it or not. He walked through and came over with the old line, haven't we met somewhere before? And it was so... And we can't repeat what she said. But anyway, she did leave me sit down, and so I got to meet her that way. It was a challenge. <laughs> uh, my mother, Edith, was she uh, She wasn't going easy. We actually got very dumb, huh? Eh? I was the oldest girl. Shane came along later, so he was the baby of the family. He makes sure that we're all taken care of. If something's wrong, I mean, Cal's the first one to make a phone call uh, and uh, and ensure that everything's okay. We started in 1979, but I always make the joke that Cal is still sleeping with our first customer. I bought his first two duplexes, but it happened to be when the interest rate was 19%. So she figured, I'll give the guys an opportunity to build me a revenue property. We had to do a lot of work on them ourselves, which we did. Cal's legacy in the city of Calgary is going to be a man that was always, always so aware of those that were less fortunate. One thing that Cal loves is the story of Ebenezer Scrooge and a Christmas Carol. Both Cal and Edith support that largely through Theater Calgary, but uh, he literally watches every version of that program every Christmas to remind himself about where he came from and where he is today. He has done a lot. And the city's been good to him, and he in turn has been good to this city. My main credo is you have to work hard. You know, don't expect it to be given to you. Uh, you know, and then once you've got some aid, give it back. <laughs> I mean, hello. Hello. <laughs> that's, uh, that, that sums it up really well. That's, uh, that's what I grew up with was, uh, was those two, and especially my father, who, uh, who really hammered in that, uh, that work ethic. And that's, uh, that's, a, that's a hard legacy to live up to, but not difficult at times when, uh, when you grow up that way. Yeah, that's a great foundation. What what do you think when you I mean you know you see that like I mean those two great uh, type A personalities as you call them uh, they 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 drove you uh, they drove you a little bit and inspired you a little bit. You were working at fourteen with your dad. So what do you, what 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 comes to your mind when you see those two faces up there talking about that uh, yeah. legacy? Yeah, there's, there's there's just a great sense of pride because you know they are two amazing human beings, and you know even at uh, even at their ages now, I mean they're still they're still going, they're still going. And I mean, that, uh, that kind of energy is infectious. Yeah, it is. Well, it shows in, in yourself as well. So, I mean, uh, they've done a great job. Uh, you know, the acorn didn't fall too far from the tree. So just so you know, Good. but, Good. uh, Cal, Cal's fantastic. I mean, great story. I dug into him and, 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 and that legacy and understanding uh, a little bit more about your company. So everybody, the reason why I set that up is just so you can have a context of the conversation as we keep moving forward. And now you're the president of, of the group of companies. So, uh, you know, you started, I mean, your dad started out when he was like a, with a partner and they built five houses and then they eventually grew into, but you've also included now land development and so on. So your company yeah. is much broader than just home building. And so anytime I say home building, I'm not suggesting 
investing. That's a small task, but I'm saying you've developed into something bigger than that. So talk us a little bit about, I'm going to throw out here. This is not info. We'll get to that. We got to put it in context, everything about you. Let's talk about your company. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to bring up the website because there's just too much to, to talk about. And I want to point out a couple of things on your website. Talk about Shane Home group of companies. Uh, tell us what that's all about. Well, it's like you said, I mean, it started off just as a simple home building company. And now it's 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 graduated into something much, much, much more uh, with multifamily as a division and land development as a division. And, you know, that's just how uh, how a company progresses over time. And that's how the world has really changed around us over the last 41 years. Right. You know, right. so we can accommodate uh, everybody's needs is, you know, from from the first time they buy and hopefully until the last time they buy. You know, right. bar, you know, setting up the Shane Holmes group of companies, funeral homes. <laughs> we'll, we'll stop. We'll stop before that. <laughs> is that a, did I hear that first here? We just heard that first here, right? There. I love it. I love that. Oh, a new business vertical, huh? Sure. <laughs> <I just thought laughs> that's fantastic. Hey, I just want to show, like, look, I mean, there's all kinds of uh different things uh that we can we can check into, but what I love is I just want to show the website here. Just one thing. This is uh this is not a shameless plug, by the way. This is just uh shameless, it's a shameless plug. There you go. Uh let, let's go take a quick uh, 3D tour of one of these houses. I, I'd live in this one, just so you know. So let's do let's go to the cascade. Just, uh, just for argument's sake, okay. I just uh, I love the fact that you have this technology built in. And getting back to technology, uh, let's talk about that because it's inside on the website here. I'll move to that. But technology is playing a big role for people who are building new homes today. Talk us through that because everyone wants it wired and connected, do they not? Absolutely, they do now. Uh, yeah, I think the best way uh, to explain it, Peter, is yeah, here we are last March going into a lockdown. And thankfully, we had a lot of this in place already mm. just to accommodate people, uh, you know, with, with, with the fear of, of, of simply going out to, uh, to a business in, in, uh, in the middle of nowhere just to view a home. Uh, that was probably the biggest shocker. And, uh, you know, like a lot of businesses out there, I mean, we had to, had to rush and make sure that we were able to accommodate people that way. And I think the most surprising thing, and you know, I've 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 often wondered about it, was you know, over that time, over the past year, we actually had two people buy from us completely, virtually, one hundred percent. They used the tours, they made the selections, they connected with our uh, our salespeople uh, over a Zoom call, and uh, and you know, they created all the documentation, they signed off on everything online, and they bought a home that way amazing see i was going just great i'm glad you mentioned that because i'm wondering if if that's is that potentially where that will be more normal i'm, I'm thinking it will be i think because the technology look i'm, I'm just kind of cruising through your house right now yeah. uh by the way i live here by the way if you give me a good deal on this one uh i live in this one so throw that out to your salespeople right now but as you can see i can move through the house i can get a real good feel i can even look out the window i mean you know if you look up here i mean i'm kind of looking out i know it's a construction zone where this is a new house but the yeah. point is that you can move around the technology is here and that's why i wanted to show that and the fact that you just told me that people are are willing to go down that route uh, mm -hmm. let's face it one time we never thought we would buy you know food or 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 order you know through amazon we i'd never buy online and now yeah uh, why not a house right why not a house especially if you trust the builder by the way good builders right well and i think that's the that's the key to all of it is you know having a good reputation that uh, that people can follow up with i mean you know like you're walking through the house right now you can see the kind of quality that we add into the homes but you know, do you know the company? Do you know the people behind the company? And that was uh, that was the next part is is really kind of introducing people to who we are. Right. I love to see. I I set up my office right there, my fine friend, right there. Yeah, perfect. Little studio right there. You can see that, right? And then yeah. I'd, I'd make that bedroom my uh, you know my working office. This would be my studio, and that would be for me and my spouse right over there. Boom. Just go and see. So, well, actually, that'd be my office. Sorry, the other way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, what are you doing? You're giving up the big room. <laughs> I know. What was I doing? Yeah, what was I doing there? What was I doing? I just wanted to show that. I think it's fantastic that you have that technology for starters. So, I, I wanted to show that. Let me go back to something else that just jumps out at me that you do, and I, and I, and I think you already just you you talked about it just now. But uh, let me go over here about about us. Um, mm -hmm. I like this a lot. Look at this, and this is what I'm talking about: the smart 
home option. Okay. So I just want to throw that out there. So everyone out there, you're, you're buying a new home in the new future or you're building a new home specifically. Uh, this is what people are looking for, right? Shane. I mean, they, they're yeah. going to spend more time at home with their home offices. They want to be connected with smart speakers and locks and so on. Talk us through that really quickly. What you guys offer as an example. Well, I mean, we offer whatever you want. I mean, we start with a relatively basic package just to just to get people started, and the rest is scalable. So, yeah, people can uh, people can go as as big as they want or as small as they want. Right. Yeah, you know, I know. I, I you could see this coming through. You know, even a couple of years ago, and that's uh, that's why we knew we had to jump on board. Yeah, especially this part down here on the bottom, what I'm referring to is the smart, you know, the, the Wi-Fi plugs and the USB ports and so on. Mm -hmm. I mean, the connectivity now is going to be so important. Even having fiber these days into homes is an option. Uh, I mean, getting fiber right to the door, depending oh, on, yeah. you know, who's bringing it in and so on. Uh, so I just wanted to note that, that you you offer that. So when you're building a home, everybody, I mean, this is this is so important to keep in mind. The other thing about about us that I like, my fine friend, is, is this. Uh, let me just go back here about us. And I want to go down here about the philosophy. I love this. Mm -hmm. I want you to just to talk because I know this is such a big part of who you are and your family is. Uh, we treat people fairly committed to providing our best in what we do, mutually respectful relationships. And then you go down through a whole bunch of others. We're going to touch on them individually. Why is this philosophy so important to you and your and your culture there as a, as a leader, speaking as the president? Uh, why is this important to you? Because it's a great guideline for people. It uh, you know it really completes the why of who we are as a company and 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 the people within the company and. Trust me, this uh, this didn't come together overnight. I mean, this is something that we've been building over the years, and uh, and this this is just kind of the latest version of, uh, of what's important to uh, to ourselves and to our uh, and to our staff and to our customers, and yeah. we openly display it because that's who we are. Yeah, I see that. I mean, like I said, I mean, I've, I've and I've done my research on the Google stuff too. I mean, it's not just me talking. Google yeah. reviews, and just so you know, everybody, no payment here to talk about his home building. I don't live in one of his homes, so just so you know, just we'll make sure that's true. I just listen. You don't build a company for forty-one years and have that kind of legacy if you're doing things uh, not so well. So, um, hey, I just want to throw up. There's people watching here. I always love when people are joining us. Uh, Peter is always joining us. Su super appreciate you being here, Judy. Uh, Judy Miko, a good, she's a realtor, uh, Shane, but she doesn't live in our country. She's on the other side of the border. Uh, but, uh, I want to send something out to her and I know you'll appreciate this, Shane, cause I know you're a very empathetic, compassionate guy. Sure. I want to send out, I want to send out a get well boom to uh, Judy. She's home, uh, resting and trying to get well. So I'm going to send her out one right now. Watch this. There you are. <laughs> All the positive boom. vibes. Us and Shane is sending you there. power boom. Send it there. Boom, get get better, get well soon. And so thank you for being here. We we appreciate that. Let's see who else is here. Oh, look at who we got so many cool people like are checking in on you, my fine friend. Uh what a wonderful story. Uh wonderful men. Wow. Wonderful. <laughs> she included me. She included me in that. Can you imagine that? Wonderful uh, men. Holy what did she know, not know you well enough? Or no, she, I know she doesn't <laughs> know me yet. Uh hey Sean. Sean's from the UK. So good to see Sean across the ocean here uh tuning in. And look at this guy. I don't know if you know this name, Duncan Bureau. Uh, airline, uh, oh, you guys got to, you guys, yeah, you guys got to connect. This guy is, uh, anyway, 25 years. He used to work, uh, here in, in Calgary with, uh, WestJet and he used to really? do with, uh, Air Canada and he's, he, anyway, he's a global aviation guy and he's in Abu Dhabi. So I uh, love the fact that, uh, um that he's tuning in peter's just talking about the interesting same layout as my home that last one uh there shane so there you go uh three bedroom <laughs> on the, so you're right there you go it's always really really funny cool. how that happens uh, it's funny and duncan said i also want to feel separated from my home you know that's true i mean i guess i guess that's another thing about building homes uh, and having offices in the home sometimes you can't really escape um what's your thoughts on that i'm just curious about uh building home offices and so on i mean you know, uh, that's actually become more popular over the past year because uh, yeah. some people have made the conscious choice not to go back to the office. You yeah. know, they're, they're able to work out of their homes, so they need a different uh, different kind of setup at home. Yeah. Uh, but part of that, you know, I mean, that's the easy part is just building it. Uh, you know, the hardest part is 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 keeping that separation. And even I found that as well. Uh, you know, I think uh, we were probably about a week into uh, – into it and uh, yeah. matt says to me you know as i'm making a phone call at you know nine o'clock at night he says when are you done work 
<laughs> when are you going to start making phone calls? Right. I mean, this is this is technology's problem in general. This 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 connectivity is that yeah, everyone thinks that because your phone is right there, which it normally is, that yeah. you're obligated to answer it. And I always remind people that my phone is for my convenience, not yours. Yes. <laughs> Just you know. so just so you yeah. know, you know, while we're on this subject uh, and, and, and we'll jump off the home building because I got so much to get to with you, my fine friend, is that l let's give some uh, tips here or maybe a couple one liners to people that are not specifically for you, but um, talk about advice when choosing a new home builder. Let's talk to that person right now who's tuning in and, and they are thinking about building that next home. Um, what, do, what should they look for? Give us a couple one liners about uh, what they should be looking for. I think some of the most important things, I mean, if you talk about the house in general, uh, you're looking at the quality. So when you walk through the show home, you have to look at the joints, you have to look at the drywall job, you have to look at a lot of those things, yep. because that's a standard that uh, that everybody should be building to. You know, past yeah. that, when you're starting to look at a home builder, I, you know, I, I, I've always related, uh, you know, a home building company to, you know, say a, a personality that you would find in media somewhere. Right. You know, who are they? What are they about? You know, and, you know, do those uh, do those values jive with your own? Bingo. I agree with that. There's an energy exchange, really, right? When yeah. you meet somebody, it's like when you buy anything, a large investment. Let's face it, a home is probably probably the largest investment. I mean, I'm, I'm generally speaking that most people don't supersede uh, their private investments than they do with their home, generally speaking, um, which means that that is their biggest investment. And you're right. I mean, I want to I want to have a good vibe and feel with the person um, and I want to look at their history, maybe 41 years worth and and see if they're still right and just see if they're doing something right. So I just wanted to, I think you're right about that. Uh, let's move along to a subject that you put yourself out there on, on LinkedIn. Uh, you're doing some great stuff with your content and you talk a lot about leadership. You talk about a lot of community and so on. Um, I ask this almost of everybody who comes on because I'm hoping that again, C-suites and other people that, uh, are trying to grow businesses, build businesses, learn from this, which is leadership. One of those words out there used all the time. Uh, do people practice it? Well, I don't know. I mean, this is the conversation leadership for you. What is that? What is you're leading a team? What is leadership to you? Well, the leadership really, again, comes back to those values and, you know, you're trying to, uh, you're trying to create those values that it's, that's it, succinct with the organization and, and leading and really comes back to leading by example. Right. You know, leaders, uh, you know, leaders uh, are, the, are the people who don't get time off. They're the ones that, you know, have to, have to be there, you know, almost 24 seven, it seems, but, uh, you know, they have to give uh, great guidance on where the organization has to go, but they also have to be open. They have to be open to change, and uh, and I think that's the big thing where you can see some leaders fail is 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 when they uh, they get stuck in the mantra of if it's not broken, don't fix it. And I yeah. guess I subscribe to the opposite: is if it's not broken, let's break it, because the world is changing around us. You know, again, as we found out a year ago, it changed and changed pretty damn quick. Yes. So if you're not prepared to hop on that train, then you should probably step aside and let somebody else handle it. Yeah, oh, And I know at some point in time, I probably won't be able to do it. And I'm prepared to uh, to step aside when the time comes. Yeah, I've heard you say that before. I think it's quite interesting that you say it that way, which if you're not willing to, and I, I put something along the bottom one of your quotes, you talked about that. I, you have to learn and listen a lot. You have to share a lot. And like you said, you have to be willing to adapt to change or you need to step aside. I. I think that's powerful. That's all about the succession thing, though. You have to have someone ready to go in your. Sure. Do, you, do, you, do you feel like you have that building in your organization right now, a succession plan? Yeah. Oh, oh I definitely do. Uh, I, I, I guess the biggest change or the biggest difference, rather, uh, between my father and I is management style. And uh, I tend, you know, not to say that he doesn't, but I tend to look at the organization of, you know, it can't just be built around me. There's a lot of uh, a lot of great people that you hire into your executive and management team, and you have to allow them an opportunity to flourish and uh, and be heard. And I think that's uh, that's that comes back to being more collaborative. And uh, again, not to say that my father wasn't, but he started the company from the ground up, so he had to be the one guy who knew absolutely everything and was involved with everything. And mm -hmm. I tend to be more collaborative and allow these people. You know, to uh, to kind of make mistakes that I think they're going to make. Hopefully, they'll surprise me. But at the same time, they come with a lot of great ideas. And when you open up that door, that's how you continue to evolve as a company. Hundred percent. And there's another phrase you you, you mentioned about you want to earn it. I know that probably you got that from yes. your dad. 
Uh, just, just, just elaborate on that for me about this earning thing. Do you think people walk into leadership roles that maybe they shouldn't be there? Um, is that where that well, comes guaranteed, from? you know, for 41 years, you get to see, uh, you get to see a few people who walk into leadership roles who, uh, who, uh, who really haven't earned it. They just kind of expected it. And I've seen those companies, you know, either, you know, in some cases they might still flourish in a lot of cases. They don't, they, uh, they, they end up, uh, you know, uh, falling apart and, uh, and disappearing after a while, especially in the home building industry. I have seen that happen a number of times. So, right. it's, you know, like any business, you know, you have to, you have to stay on the cusp all the time. You have to be prepared to change or you're not going to be around very long. Absolutely. Well, you know, and I talk about leadership is not just business, right? That's in everything that's in business, sports, politics, world leadership, all yeah. kinds of stuff. I mean, people get into roles that you're like, Hey, uh, I'm not sure if you're supposed to be there yet. Uh, anyway, that, that's right. You, you, you've been around a lot of leaders. I, I know you have because you're, you're, you're one in yourself in the community, which means you interact with a lot of different leaders, just a mm -hmm. couple, a uh, couple traits that you see common with uh, people that you consider great leaders, like your dad, let's just say, yeah. or, but maybe some other, just a couple traits that you recognize uh, as being something in found in a great leader? Found in a great leader. Passion is one of them. Uh, if they don't have the passion, then they're only going to be so successful. And, uh, you know, it's, it's inspiring being around those leaders because, you know, within minutes of meeting them, you do find out what their passion is and you understand that they're there for that right reason. Yeah. You know, uh, being dedicated to the community is, a, is another big one. You know, they only want what's best for the city that they live in. Mm. And that's why I think we've been so successful here in Calgary, especially is we have those, uh, those dedicated, those passionate leaders who, who want the best for this city because it's home. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting how we sometimes separate. We think people, you, we're all in the same community. Like, we're, you know, we meet each other at the Tim Hortons lineup or whatever. We're at the hockey rink together. Your kids and my kids play together. And <laughs> We're all just trying to figure out, you know, what's best for our community. Uh, that's absolutely true about uh, a passion and dedication to your community. Uh, I know you, you're very, uh, one thing that I, I've read a lot about and I've just seen in your actions, you're very empathetic and, and compassionate with your team. Uh, they become part of your family. Uh, that's just how you are. I'm just curious, um, you know, your thoughts on, on, it seems to be a meme out there, if you will, is that they're, Leaders need to be more empathetic and compassionate as opposed to, you know, driving to bottom line and these kinds of things. Uh, talk to me about why that's important to you to lead with empathy and compassion in your business. Uh, I think it's, it, it's important in every business out there. Uh, you know, I mean, you've, uh, you've hired people and, uh, and you've made a commitment to them as much as they've made a commitment to you. I think the best way to describe it is go back to last March. And, you know, you're sitting there saying, holy shit, things have dropped off. People aren't getting out there. People are scared. They're not doing anything. And uh, I just, I came back and I made a statement to our staff early on that, you know, if we can just break even this year, I'll keep everybody employed. I don't want them to think, you know, even though in the values, you know, profitability is one thing, but uh, making sure that we, uh, we don't send people to the unemployment line was more important for me. Because a strange thing happened three, four years ago is, you know, when the economy really slowed down in Alberta, we had to do layoffs for the first time in the history of our company. I mean, we had slowdowns before, but we, uh, we never laid anybody off. We kept people around because we thought it was a short blip and it usually was. Yeah. You know, so when you lay off people from your company for the first time and you, and you send 20 year employees and two year employees to the unemployment line. It's a sickening feeling. Yeah. See, you yeah. know, and you want to be able to stay committed to them, but you know, the times dictated that you couldn't. Yeah. As, a, as someone who's empathetic, I bet you that, that again, that's that you'd carry that home. You know I mean, talking about living with your business, you, you go to sleep with that as a compassionate leader. Right. And I think that's probably part of why some leaders don't go down that route because you know that you, if you're an empathetic person, it's probably natural for you. But if you have to develop empathy and understanding for people, you realize it's truly, it's, it, you, you carry it around with you 24 hours, right? Sure you do. Sure yeah. you do. If you're not, you're not that, uh, you're not that invested. 
Yeah, you're not invested in your people. I, you know, I appreciate, I appreciate you saying that. Um, you know, so let's let's. Ju- I I, I want to go uh, and again stay on this subject matter because again you built a, a great company or again part of the legacy of a great company. Uh, obviously, it was handed over and you you built uh, great people around you and you have some core values. So I'm going to run through the core values okay. with you because I'm hoping that other leaders that are tuning in and people just want to understand leadership. Uh, it's great to hear from you and your perspective on it. I'll jump back to the comments for a second because there's so many uh people here uh so duncan still is on this uh home office soundproof with all the gadgets yeah that's me sure absolutely (laughs) Absolutely. we can do that we can do that here at uh well or he can sorry not we (laughs) (laughs) got carried away there for a second there uh here we go love working from home um i took over our bonus room for my office (laughs) right that's that's what this is by the way just so you know uh, this is an extra room in my house and it's uh this is a studio uh in my house so uh i've done the same thing yeah but rob cheats because he's a video guy and you know right i know i watch his videos on how to put together the home studio and i still have to do it yeah uh, we'll come over and do that. We'll share whiskey. We'll do that. Bring magnifying glass with you. Walk daily to watch, uh, watch, watch home being built. Yeah. And shake my head when the roof goes on. <laughs> Soaked plywood, trapping in the moisture. Yeah, you're right, Peter. I mean, we're going back to the home building, how to pick one. Uh, yeah. You, you got to watch what they do. That's one of my favorite phrases. Watch what people do. They'll tell you who they are. So watch what a builder does. They'll tell you who they are, right? Does that sound right, Shane? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And there's a good friend, Tara McCool. I bet you know that uh, beautiful young lady right there. Very smart lady who was on television here in, uh, in Calgary. Calgary for a number yeah. of years. Yeah, yeah I remember yeah. Tara. Yeah, she's a rock star. I love that. And uh, Marcello, good to see you as well. Thank you for tuning in. I just wanted to show you, Shane. Like, you know, like I get more comments now for you than they don't. They tune in for you, my fine friend. That's why they're here. So I appreciate all you guys uh, being here. Let's go through the traits. Uh, eight core values, uh, Shane and his uh, group. Uh, you're leading a, a great group of companies. Let's talk about uh, core number one, honesty. Uh, I mean, I know it speaks honesty for and integrity. Uh, you know, and I mean, I don't think anybody starts the day wanting to screw up, but at least admit when you've made that mistake and and make it better. And that's all we ask of uh, of ourselves and our staff. Just be yeah. honest. Yeah, I would imagine in the home building process, if you have to call the customer and say, "We did something that either wasn't on the list or whatever," sure. You better call that out like immediately, right? We want to try and get ahead of it, but uh, you know the honesty uh, part is 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 so important to your core values. Uh, just admit when you made a mistake. We all make them. We're not perfect, and you know, I mean, this this happens, and yeah, we do it. Yeah, you move along. Understood. I mean, it was built as part of your brand as well. Core uh, value too, integrity. 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 Yeah. Well, even within the community, it's yeah, you know, it's. It's having that integrity to build the right, uh, build the product and build it properly. You know, yeah. we want people to, uh, you know, especially our staff, just to present themselves in a way with with the highest integrity possible. Trust me, there's there's people out there you want to tell where to go, but you know, proceed <laughs> with integrity. With integrity, you can do it with integrity. By the way, a good friend of mine, uh, Graham Johnson, always says uh, there's a way to walk on people's shoes without taking off the shine. Just exactly. So you know. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Something we could do. How about this one? Courtesy. Gosh, can uh-huh. we all use that a little bit more as we start getting back together out in the public? Do you ever notice? I don't know about you, but even when I go to a parking lot now and there's more than five cars, I'm like, where's everybody coming? <laughs> 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 I'm so used to being everyone home <laughs> locked down as I like go and hey, what are you doing out? So one courtesy. Of the realities, hey? <laughs> yeah. So courtesy, how how does that play a role in, in part of the well, course? Treat people value? the way you want to be treated. Really. I mean, that's what it comes down to. Uh you know, we're in a uh, we're in, we're we're in a business where you know the, the, the we're dealing with a lot of different uh, ethnic groups, and there's different ways to be courte- or uh, to to apply courtesy. And uh, I think that's probably one of the most important ones. And one thing that we've had to learn more about is as we continue to evolve. Wow, it's I, I'm fascinating that you mentioned that about uh, the uh, culturally, like you said. I mean, there's there's different things that we might say casually between you and I, for example. Yes. And, and if you're into a, 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 a different culture, uh, that might not sound so good in a sales process, correct? No, no, definitely not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. Like for example, I had to learn when I was over in in, in you know a, Asian general, like. It, the handing of business cards, for right. example. Yes. That's an example, right? You know, the handing and the respect that's shown. So courtesy, I, I really appreciate you mentioning that, especially about cultures. It's really important mm-hmm. to tap into that. Hey, one of the three words for you, community. Um, I'll, I, I always go back to, a, you know, to a line that my parents uh, 
kind of instilled in me growing up is that you, you cannot derive an income from the community without giving back to it. And that's a big part of our core values. Oh, community. I love that. It's not so much you're building it like physically, you're building mm -hmm. it you know, spiritually, emotionally, and giving back and so on. I know that's a big part of your brand as well. And we're going to touch on that in a second. I'll show you in a little bit. Partnerships. Why is this? You know, this is, I'm going to tell you something that just, I'm going to throw it out there at you. Like, it's so important to surround yourself with good people, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, good people. So, why, why partnerships such, making it a core value for your company? Well, it, largely because you know, we're, we're not the all in one solution. You know, we do have sub trades and trades that we utilize. And, uh, you know, we want to know that they're, they, they kind of buy into our core values and that they share those same values because we're trying to build a dream home for people. And if they're not aligned, then they're not going to be working for us. But we have a lot of those relationships that we've had there for 25, 30 years. Right. So yeah. That's so our cool. partners, we, we, we don't just call them our trades and suppliers. They're our partners because they help make the home too. Yeah. Mutual respect, reciprocity. That's another one of my favorite words, reciprocity, yes. give and take all that kind of reputation. And this gets back to all these, some of these core values, like Absolutely. honesty, integrity, and so on. Uh, reputation is everything. You guys got one, you've built one for 41 years. Why is that super, super important to, to hold on to? Because you, I don't want to be a fly-by-night company. I mean, the intent is to, you know, to be here for the long term. And, uh, and you know, and it, uh, it supports the rest of the core values in a big way is that, you know, our reputation is important to us. Mm. You know, we don't want to sit there and say it's acceptable to piss off 10% of the people. The other 90% are happy. Give me a break. That's not a business. That's, that's not in it for the long term. So, yeah, your reputation is, is really kind of your, uh, your, your business card in life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear that. And we just talked about this earlier, a little bit building a team around you. Great, smart people. You've done that. We just mentioned succession. Uh, to talk about your team a little bit. How are you feeling about your team these days? I'm feeling really good about them because, you know, especially now, I mean, you've, you've seen how everybody's kind of come together for, uh, for one purpose, for one goal. And that, uh, you know, that is to, uh, you know, make the company the best it can be. And, you know, when you have people who, uh, who really don't fit the culture, you're not building a team around them. Fortunately, yeah. you know, we're very happy with the, uh, the team that we have around us. Yeah. Can you recognize that right away, by the way, when you go through that process, let's just say you and I got together and we started yeah. chatting and stuff. You, yeah. you, you'd pick up on certain things when you, how, how do you know, how do you know that? Like, well, how do you know, uh, what that is? No, well, you just, you, you, you talk to people, you get to know who they are as a person and, uh, you know, and I, you know, maybe I cheat a little bit, you know, and I ask certain qualifying questions about them, <laughs> just to try and understand them a little bit, uh, a little bit better. Uh, you know, and it's, uh, it's just, it's, it's a fun way to get to know people. And, you know, again, you want to know that you're picking the right people who buy into your core values and, uh, and the culture of your company in order to make it the best you can. It's never yeah. perfect. It's not going to be a hundred percent perfect. That would just be bullshit telling you that it's, yeah. it's, it's almost, you know, it's there for the most part. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I don't know. I, I you can always train for success. I believe, I really believe yeah. that you, it's hard to teach culture. You can either kind of, you can teach it, but if you don't fit in, um, I don't know. I agree with you on that. I, I really oh, do. You mentioned anywhere. No, you mentioned this one. I think this is, you know, again, this is what makes it so tough for them is that you got to balance profitability. You're still running a business. Sure. I mean, as much as you care about your, you know, thinking that your employees and I, I shouldn't say that the team members, the team yeah. members, um, you know, whether you treat them like family or not, I mean, you know, you can't take blood from a turnip. I mean, if there's no revenue to pay somebody. So talk about how important this plays a role in what you decide to do with your company. Well, it, it's, it's, it, it's, it's the one, uh, one value that kind of ties everything back in together. Uh, like you said, if, I mean, if you're not profitable, I can't afford to keep people employed. If you're not profitable, I can't give back to the community, you know, and, uh, and I know for a number of years, people seem to think that profitability was just this horrible word. You can't use profitability on anything. Right. Well, yeah, you can, because I'm taking a tremendous risk every year and I do want to make a profit at it. Uh, and, yes. you know, don't worry, the rest will fall in line. Right. You know, it's funny you say that because I would often say that about the word, the concept of philanthropy. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you, you know, uh, you can't give back what you don't have. It's kind of like, you know, you can't give what I don't, you know, if you don't have self-respect, it's hard to give respect to people. If yeah. I want to give back to the community physically and I'm in survival mode, it's, it's hard to do unless you're, you know, philanthropy comes from, 
the proceeds of some of the things that we are doing, which is profitability in our businesses, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's, I feel the same way about that. I don't know where the confusion is on that and why profitability got a dirty word. Except for when you read it on it on big magazines. You know, we don't seem to have a problem when Elon Musk goes from $25 <laughs> billion to $200 billion. We're like, hey, good for you. <laughs> yeah, but you still love Elon, don't you? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Okay, <laughs> you're right about that. You're right about that. Well, no, I appreciate you sharing uh, those those core values and, and basically why they play such a role. So I, I think that's really, really cool. Uh, I want to throw out a couple, again, people still here. It's awesome. Here's cool. I made a mistake. Learn from it and fix it, you know, fix it forward with transparency. I know Duncan is a big Good proponent. One talking about, you know, um, uh, mistake, you know, I've asked him, be, uh, Duncan, before on the show, you know, what kind of mistakes you've made as a leader and so on. And, and absolutely. And yes, honesty is the best policy. Absolutely about that. Um, and here is Judy. I hope you're, where's Judy? I just saw her there. She's getting better, uh, by the way. I think we sent her a really good power boom. So she's, uh, uh, you're your own billboard uh, clients for life. Uh, they become your family, not just your clients. So as a realtor, exactly. she, Right. I mean, her, her, how she builds her community as realtors. You must have those kinds of relationships with realtors as well. Do you, do you have a good, is that oh, how that? For sure. For right? sure we do. You know, we've, uh, we've had 41 years to develop those relationships and there's even new ones that have, uh, have cropped up over the past year because yeah, there's a, uh, there's really kind of a different generation of realtor out there now. Right. Oh, what, do mean, what do you mean by that? Uh, they're more tech savvy. They're, uh, you know, they're socially inclined and they, uh, they get out there. And I mean, that's, that's just a part of the whole package. You know, even now we're teaching our area sales managers to, uh, to do the same. Right. Yeah. Being, being out there and understanding, having compassion, understanding what really is going on out there, speaking with people, connecting with people, like For you sure. said, tech savvy, knowing what's going on on social media, what's being said. Well, what again, that's, 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 that's our sales team. Uh, you know, I mean, we have a lot of, uh, we have a lot of seasoned veterans who are trying to learn this and we have some great young talent that just surprise me every day. Heck, I have to learn something off, uh, off of social media from them and they're great. Yeah, absolutely. Agree. I mean, we always, we're always in learning mode and, uh, Marcello, I appreciate that. Great chat. Uh, thank you for having Shane as your guest next to, uh, should we talk to Shane for the soul. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, you just get your next book or something there. Right? It's hard enough getting a call out for our, uh, you know, for business in Calgary every month. Now you want me to write a book. <laughs> just throwing it out there. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> All right, let's 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 move to something a little bit more. Um, I mean, it's, it's timely, and it, it and uh, I think I just think it's such an important conversation because um, I know you've spoken about it uh, in multiple articles and interviews. Yes. Uh, you also have mentioned it uh, on some of your uh, videos on LinkedIn, and well, it's about mental health, mental mm -hmm. health and wellness. Um, you have in your past, you've you've dealt with severe uh, uh, challenges within a, a family setting. Yes. Uh, of mental health issues let's let's talk to the about that right now for everybody but specifically people who are probably leading people um because first of all if you have that in your family uh, it affects you as a person and then of course that goes into your business philosophy and so on so talk to us a little bit about you know your experience with mental health and maybe some advice you would give to people uh experiencing that right now in their families it, well, it's uh, it's one that's affected me, uh, you know, from in, in a lot of perspectives because I've had uh, older family members have mental health issues, but you know, more recently, my ex-wife, uh, who uh, has had mental health issues for a number of years, and you know, we went through the program. She went to the hospital. She got help, and you know, she uh, she did her uh, uh, worked with her psychiatrist and uh, medication and. And past that, you know, when that year was done, that was the end of it. That was the support gap, I guess. And mm -hmm. it's it's probably one of the most frustrating things because, you know, obviously we're not together anymore. But, uh, you know, my young son has to, uh, right. you know, has to deal with that now. And that's, uh, that's a bit of a challenge for him. I mean, he's a great advocate for it at, at his young age. But it's also a burden that, uh, that I don't think should be placed on him. I mean, there needs to be an extended... Uh, reach past that year for support in the community. And that, uh, you know, that's, that's never been more evident now than any time uh, in history, because, I mean, we've seen mental health challenges happen over the past year. Uh, and, you know, we've all struggled with it, I think, but, you know, some more than others. Yeah, for sure. Now, and, and as a leader in your organization, uh, you know, without specifics, have you felt, uh, have you felt that in inside your own organization as well? Oh, definitely. Yeah. 
Definitely. Uh, you know, I mean, there's some people who, uh, you know, uh, they, they haven't been able to see their, their close relatives for, for more than once over the past year. And these are people who are used to, you know, seeing their family, you know, on a, on a daily or weekly basis. And I mean, that's challenging for people. Uh, you know, I mean, you can, you can talk about Zoom calls or FaceTime. It's not the same. We know it's not the same being in the mm-hmm. same room, touching and feeling and, uh, and, and really hearing them. Yeah. And that's, uh, that, that's one big fallout I think we're going to feel from all of this. You know, if we can get past the vaccines and, and getting people back into what I call real life, mm-hmm. it's going to be a big challenge. And, uh, and I'm not sure what the solution is yet, but uh, there's got to be a solution. There's, a, there's smarter people than I am in this field, and, and, uh, and hopefully they present the solutions and, and we can all kind of partake in them. Yeah, I appreciate you being uh, transparent with you know your history there and and the fact you mentioned for your son because uh, you and I briefly just just before I mentioned about uh, you know I I had someone in my family struggling as well and yeah. it's very frustrating to be um, stuck in that no person's no man's land of they, you can take them to get help so far and then but they're not uh, ill enough that they can't function so there's this space and. Yeah. As family members, it's uh, it can be overwhelming. So I appreciate you sharing a little bit of that as uh, no as people. Let me let me share this uh, about you. We you talked about about community is such a big part of what you do, uh, giving back, making a difference. I know that that's something that was just pounded into you by your two parents. That's for sure. Um, but I know that that plays a big role in what you do with your company as well. So let me just uh, share very quickly a quick little clip. Uh, okay. another quick little clip and just show a little bit about what the, the kinds of things that you do. And we'll jump back to talk about your uh, community involvement and why that's important to you. So let's have a look sure. at this. Hi everyone. I'm Shane Wenzel. I'm president of the Shane Holmes group of companies here in Calgary. One of the groups I'd like to highlight today is the YMCA of Calgary. Ever since its inception in 1902, the YMCA of Calgary has been working very hard as a charitable organization, and they respond to the needs of Calgarians and the community around them. What the YMCA Calgary has done is it's evolved into a vibrant charity where thousands of Calgarians are involved each and every year through health and wellness programs, leadership and community outreach programs as well. Their values align very well with us. We're proud to help support the YMCA's efforts through a major sponsorship of one of their eight health and wellness facilities in North Calgary, the Shane Holmes Rocky Ridge YMCA. Wow, yeah. that's, that's legacy stuff right there. Uh, talk talk to us about your love for community involvement like that. Well, again, you go back to the fact that you know you can't uh, you can't derive that income from the uh, community and not give back to it. And you know the nice part is we've had that profitability, <laughs> and we've had the ability to give back to. Uh, to the community in in that way, uh, you know, and it's not just you know the YMCA. I mean, they're a great organization. Our values align one hundred percent. Sure. You know, but there's other organizations out there that need that help. You know, the uh, you know the Calgary Miners Soccer Association. I mean, that largely started because my son played soccer when he was younger, and I met with the group and uh, and began to understand you know how they work on a shoestring budget. Mm-hmm. You know, so we uh, we jumped in there to uh, to help support them. Uh, you know, the uh, the Chestermere uh, didn't have a library. If you can imagine that years ago, they did not have a library at the wow. uh, in the in the small little town. You know, but we helped support that as well. Yeah, I, I like I said, I just love the fact that it's built into what you do and what your dad mm-hmm. said about got to give it's not all yours you got to give it back you got to give some of it back Uh, one of the things i wanted to touch on with that statement is that or 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 this idea is because again you're uh and i say this with all due respect so so please uh wait till the end of it so you'll get a contact (laughs) yeah you have a very successful company and so you you know you carry a lot of social currency and financial uh, uh, currency that can actually go out and do things i want you to talk to the person who's feeling like gosh, you know, I'm just a, I'm one person. I'm just that single person. I don't know if I can make a difference like that. It's easy for Shane. Yeah. He can go build a building. I can't. So, uh, let's talk to that one person about the power of one. How can one person in your, in your mind, make a difference in their community? One person can do an absolute ton. You know, they can give their time. They could give five bucks. They could, uh, you know, they could, uh, they could amplify the message of any of those organizations out there to bring light to it. 
Yeah, and I think that's what's important. It, you're right. It doesn't come down to just dollars and cents and being able to sponsor a building. It's 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 giving that time, giving it back to the community, and especially now we need it more than ever. You know, we've had some rough times in this province, especially in this city. And you know, hey, five minutes a day, uh, you know, an hour hour a month. I mean, that goes a long way. Yeah, I think in Canada, by the way, I think the stat is something like we, we and I bet you the numbers change now, uh, something like 2 billion hours of volunteerism mm -hmm. in, in Canada, 2 billion hours. 2 billion of them, yeah. So you're absolutely right. I mean, it's not about uh, writing the checklist and we still need people to write checks and, and, and be sure. up front with philanthropy. But, you know, philanthropy is more than just cocktail parties and writing checks, everybody. It's all about, you know, it's the love of humanity, right? I mean, it's the original mm -hmm. definition of getting part of your community. So I just wanted to make sure that we didn't, we always differentiate the idea of giving back it comes in simple ways and we can all make a difference so appreciate doing uh the work that you do in our community and just for the world in general so appreciate that talking about supporting business talking about supporting i just learned listen this is why i love doing what i do because uh, when i dug into your story it connected to another story that i just did and i was like peter you missed it the first time and I was like, wow, how did I miss this? And I just learned something about you and another good friend of mine uh, from Virtual Gurus. <laughs> are we starting to connect some dots here? Yes, we are. We are, right? And I was like, this guy is part of what organization? And what is that organization? And so uh, I want to bring this up right now. I, I did not know, Shane, I'm just telling you, I didn't know this existed. And I was like, I feel so, I just want to make sure that I bet you every community either has one. And we're talking about uh, the Chamber of Commerce, but a very specific Chamber of Commerce here. We're talking about LGBTQ. And yes. actually, I was told to put a two in there, plus, uh, yes. by the way. Uh, so it's it's LGBTQ2 plus um, Chamber of Commerce. Which, yes. tell me about this, because then I reached out to Bobby, and I yeah. was like, she goes, why? Well, I was like co-founder of that thing. I was like, what? So oh, please tell me why this is just a passion project for you and why you're involved with it, generally speaking. And well, you know, Bobby and I had a conversation, she's how many years ago now? Four. And I didn't realize that there wasn't an Alberta chapter of uh, the, uh, the LGBTQ chamber. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Lots you know, of words. Chamber of Commerce in Alberta, and that uh, that actually kind of surprised me is uh, is kind of being a newly minted gay man uh, to to know that there's this kind of support isn't here. It's it's across Canada in most provinces. It's across the United States, uh, and she uh, you know she made a pretty uh, passionate plea, and I said you don't have to make it passionate. Like let's just do it. Right, and look, and that's how I found it. That's how I saw it there, Shane. I was like, I was doing yeah. this research. I said, Shane Holmes and the virtual gurus. I had her on the show. And, yeah. And she didn't mention it. And by the way, I mean, just as you know, I mean, I don't call you and ask for research papers or <laughs> bios. I do my own. And, uh, but I saw that and I just, I just wanted to make sure that uh, that was, you know, recognized. And I, and I love the concept behind it. It's not just, a, it's not just about that. Uh, it is really about community building community in general. Mm -hmm. uh, but it gives everybody an, an, an opportunity to, to recognize that, um, Hey, business leaders are everywhere in our community. There's people doing some great things and we should be recognizing them, re recognizing them for what they do and so on. I'm just going to go over to the membership part uh, just very quickly to show you what I'm talking about here. Um, you know, it's all about doing something great, you know, equality through, through business. Um, and let me just go down and show some of the, the great people that you have involved, some of the memberships. And so there's the example, everybody, um, just here in, you know, in this particular chapter. But obviously, uh, like you said, there's, there's probably many across the country in different communities and so on. So um, I just love the fact that you're, you're, you're part of it. Uh, what's the messaging for your company when to, to be involved with this kinds of things? What are you trying to say with your brand by being part of this? Well, again, it's, it, it's, it's about inclusivity. Yeah, and I guess, uh, you know, from my perspective, it's always been, is it, you know, I mean, I wanted to give something back to the community, uh, you know, because I wasn't there for a long time. Yeah, and this was, uh, this was one great opportunity to help them out and, uh, and get them going, uh, because they do a tremendous amount of work on a shoestring budget. And that's, uh, that's one thing that I love about this organization is that they're, 
they're, they're some of the most dedicated uh, people around. Uh, you know, we go for coffee every once in a while and they keep asking, what more can we do for you? And I'm sitting there saying, do more for the community. You don't need to do anything for me. Right, right. You know, I don't need, uh, you know, as a sponsor and uh, and a member, I don't need, you know, it, it, you know to, to, to have any more exposure, you know, just so you think I'm getting my money's worth. I'm getting my money's worth. I'm supporting people that uh, that need it. Who've been oh, marginalized over the years, and that's what's important to the uh, to the whole organization. Highlighting those businesses and and making people those people especially feel like they're a part of the community. And well said. Just about again having people feel connected to the community. I mean, let's face it; it's hard enough. I just said this to somebody the other day about a conversation. It's hard enough to get people to come into your corner uh, to do you know to help you when you're duking it out in the world. Uh, mm -hmm certainly don't push people out of your corner, you know, just try to build the community, build them around, support the ones that are being inclusive, uh, offering equality and opportunities for all and using that languaging. That's what I like the most is the languaging of it. It's, uh, it doesn't matter you know, what your beliefs or non-beliefs are. It's all about just how do we as a community uplift and inspire each other. So I, I appreciate your work on that. And that's why I wanted to bring it up. And then I saw Bobby and I was like, oh gosh, I can't believe it. So two of you guys, uh, you know, birth of a feather right there. Boom. <laughs> and she's got a great business going and I love to see her success so far with virtual gurus. Right. Yeah. Good shout out to Bobby Joe and her team yep. at virtual gurus. Absolutely. And I've done, I did, I've done an interview with her. So I hope everyone goes back and revisits that because she, she is doing some really amazing things over just the last four four years or so i mean five four yeah. or five years so love that no i love that and i i actually uh just so you know i did reach out to her and i said i would love for you to just kind of call and talk to this guy uh but she was actually in an investor meeting right now oh really good for <laughs> her an investor meeting right this second she said peter i can't put it off so i i just wanted to tell you that she said she so she wanted me to send the best and she goes you're talking to shane tomorrow she and here's what she said she goes that guy's like gigantic as she said i'm just a little company i'm just wow. like hey much respect i'm just saying much respect there right that's all absolutely i i love that i love it hey reflections time i i love going down this path with someone like you i mean this is fun <laughs> stuff this is fun stuff uh not like we haven't had any fun yet but here here we go uh i want to go down a little path with you and uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to just going to throw up uh a picture throw up a picture and then I just want you to uh, comment on it. That's the first thing that pops in your mind. For sure. First thing that comes up, uh, no right or wrong here. If we're just going down sort of like it's, it's, it's time to do some reflection. So let me just pull this up here for you. I, I love this. I love doing this. This is so much fun. Reflections with Shane Wenzel. Let's, let's see how this plays out. So uh, <laughs> don't get worried. Don't worry, buddy. It's all good. I would. Uh, it's all good for. That's uh, who are these fine, good-looking people right there? Uh, it's a wonderful picture of my mother and father. Love the beehive haircut, Bob. Right. <laughs> Rocks like both of them are Type A people. You learned a lot from them, I'm guessing. Oh, you can't imagine, you know, being the youngest one in the family and sitting around the kitchen table after all my siblings have moved out listening to these two speak it's either business or marketing or uh you know politics so right <laughs> i picked up a lot there a lot going on in that kitchen table yeah absolutely. <laughs> yeah i know you have other family members and stuff but a lot of them uh, much older than you left so you were yes. sort of growing up like an only child so i mean those conversations yeah. were great, right oh yeah yeah i'm uh, nine years younger than my closest sibling Right. So they were up and gone and you're kind of growing up around this, uh, this triangle here at the kitchen table, listening to these stories. That's great. I love that. I love that. Hey, who's this good looking fella right there? Oh my God. This is what happens when Shane wakes up after a camping trip when he's 19 years old. <laughs> I love it. Look at that face. And, you know, here my friends have a camera and they're taking pictures of everybody in their worst state. Ah, uh, hey, it looks pretty good there, buddy. That looks fine. Who's this good looking? Who's this good looking person? Oh, uh, Robbie the Robbie the dog. Robbie Robbie the Pyrenees Retriever Cross. Yeah, this is this 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 is a current picture. This is a current member of your family. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. Robbie's uh, you know about three years old now. Fantastic. And I mean, where that came from is uh, my uh, my older dog Jax. We had to get him put down here about uh, three four years ago. Hmm. And, you know, after about four months of moping around, Matt uh, looks at me one night and he says, oh, for God's sakes, would you go get another dog? He says, I'm tired of your goddamn moping. <laughs> so a... we get Robbie. And the funny part about this story is I have no idea what a Pyrenees 
is. I know what a retriever is. Right. And the next day I go to work and Matt texts me uh, and says, do you realize what we bought? I said, no. And he sent me a picture of a Pyrenees, literally the size of its owner with its paws on its <laughs> sure. owner's shoulders. Right. Giant and he says, we bought a giant dog. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I got to tell you my same story. A uh, quick story with my dog. I bought it. When, when, sorry. She was one. She was the last of seven. I picked her, I, when I picked her up and her paws were as big as her whole head. And yeah. I was like, oh, my gosh, she's going. But what she did was she grew into her paws. Is that mm -hmm. what happened here as well? Oh, uh, definitely did. Yeah. Grew into the paws. Yeah. Grew into the feet. Absolutely. It's very cool. Who's this? <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is little Gabriel. You know, Matt right. lost his uh, his cat here about uh year year and a half ago now okay and uh and he was devastated by it and uh even he waited long, a while and you know just one day out of the blue he's looking on uh on kijiji and he finds this little cat and you know he's you can tell he's been malnu uh, malnutrition and and just needed uh needed some love and he went and he uh he picked him up for a couple hundred bucks and there you go. Now he's a part of the family, and him and the dog are best friends. There you go. Cats and dogs. I was just going to say, sometimes I ask you, the cat person, dog. Well, it's both. Uh, it's both in that household right there. Uh, what's this guy doing? What What is going on there? <laughs> okay. So a little known fact is that it, my partner, Matt, was born in South Africa, and oh. his, uh, his family moved from there when he was three years old. So about two, three years ago, uh, we decided, okay, well, let's take the trip of a lifetime. Let's go to South Africa and, uh, you know, so he can kind of go home and, uh, and see what it's all about. Well, his big thing was we got to swim with the great white sharks. Well, right. we couldn't swim with the great white sharks because there were no great white sharks there at the time. Oh, so Matt's right. upset and he's standing there by a brochure rack and he goes and he spins it, stops it, grabs us. He says, you want to go skydiving? I'm like, wow, scares the shit out of me, but let's go. Yeah. Wow. See, that's cool that you were scared. Yeah. I well, of course you'd be scared. You should be. I mean, so that's you there. That's you there. Uh um that's me there you're, with, you're in tandem uh, with somebody else, right? You're in tandem with somebody else? Yeah. yeah well, yeah. I don't oh. think I could have pulled the uh out of court. <laughs> I was scared enough getting out of the airplane. <laughs> I know. Why would you jump out of a very good functional plane? I, I I agree with you. You know what? I I have never done that, so I envy you for that. Who's uh Who's that good looking couple right there? What's that? That is my uh, lovely husband Matt, and that is uh, the celebration that we had a little over two years ago with uh, with friends and family here. Because one of the one of the unknown things is that uh, Matt and I, when we went to South Africa, we eloped there. Ah. So instead of making a big production of it back here, what we did is we uh, we just set aside time nine months later and invited close friends and family to a little celebration for us. And that's the picture of that night. Oh, that's brilliant. Great, great pho uh, photograph. And uh, when I said at the beginning of the show, everybody, that uh, that uh, Shane has a built-in hairstylist, uh, this is what this uh, fine young gentleman does, Matt. And that's why I want to talk to him. I mean, look at my hair here. I mean, it's just like... I, <laughs> Like he could, you know, he could probably pay uh, a couple months mortgage payment with working on stuff like this. So uh, I got oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> always, always good to find a new good hairstylist. Like finding a good dentist, man. You want to find a good hairstylist. Uh, who are these uh, good looking people here? Uh, well, on the uh, the one side, you got my father, Cal, my mother, Edith. And on the other side, you uh, you have my son, Sebastian. Look at that. Ah, that's great. Great for, Hey, that's, it brings up good memories. I'm, I'm certain of that. Right. I mean, that's Oh, definitely. Uh, you know, Sebastian and I are you know, as close as a father and son could be, and I love him to death. And oh. it's, uh, it's funny, you know, every day you see something new out of them and, and the mm. world is, is, is so wonderful and open. And, and I mean that, uh, that kind of energy, that's, that's contagious. Yeah, it sure is. Sure is. Well, that's a great moment right there. I just like this. I just like this picture. I think you're down at the Saddle Dome watching a hockey game. True or false? Uh, no, actually, we're uh, we're at the rodeo. And, oh, right. Yeah, watching the rodeo with uh, with my mother, who uh, it's rare to get a picture of her. Yeah. So I snuck this one in without her noticing. That's why she's smiling, not covering her face. And oh, that's <laughs> oh, that's great. You captured that one. Hey, look at this trio. What's uh? What's that memory bring back right there? This is what happens when you can't cross the border into Montana and 
<laughs> you, go, you take a trip out to the shoe shops and rent a houseboat. So that's what uh, that's what we did this past summer as a as a family. We went out there and spent a week on the houseboat. Uh, you know, chewing down the lake. Awesome, awesome, great way to quarantine right there. And look at this uh, great picture. I love the. Yeah. Uh, you know, I had this magazine. I couldn't find it. I have it here in the house, and I just can't. I couldn't find it today, so I thought I'd bring it up. But uh, I just love the idea, you know, uh, what it says, right? Building legacies. Uh, how do you feel when you see a picture like that with you and the word legacy on there? It, 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 it hits an emotional chord for sure. You know, like my father and I don't have many pictures like this together. Hmm. I think the last one that we had uh, was probably about 20 years ago, believe it or not. And, uh, and uh, you know, this one was just... The, the timing couldn't have been more perfect when we uh, when we talked about it. Oh, I love it. I, I just uh, like I said, I like you know as a just as another male, uh, and all males have interesting relationships with their fathers, as we all know. Um, you know, I I don't have a picture like that. That's for sure. Um, and uh, so I look at that, and I think uh, any 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 male can relate to uh, having a story about the, themselves and their father and the word legacy. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's just I think it's just a fabulous picture, my friend. I really, really do. Uh, so there you go. A little a couple of reflections right there. Speaking of reflections, uh, here's something right now for you. And so get ready for this. Uh, this should be a lot of fun. Um, look at this good looking fellow right here. Uh, here's a good looking fellow right there. Look at that guy. <laughs> <laughs> look at that guy. Holy shit. Look where the oh, hair is. <laughs> look at that guy. Boom. Uh, you know, I guess, you know, and all joking aside though, I mean, look, you're, a, there's the future president of a very successful company, uh, right there. I'm just wondering younger, younger self, uh, if you see that guy right now, uh, what would you like to say to that guy right now? Oh, that's a good what? one. Yeah. I, would I, you? Well, first of all, I would tell him, earn it to don't expect it. You know, you never understand that when you're younger, but I mean, that's, that's one of the best lines I think you could give people is, uh, you know, it just doesn't happen overnight. You can't uh, can't expect it to just be handed to you. You have to earn it. Yeah, and that was uh, that was probably one of the most important things that I've learned over my career. Uh, you know, because even my father said to me, he said, you know, just because your name's on the door doesn't mean that you're going to become president of this company. It doesn't mean that you're going to run it in that capacity because you have to earn it. You have to uh, you have to earn the respect of the people around you. You have to earn. The respect of the people in the community and you have to have a vision moving forward oh yeah see i i love the fact that your dad i didn't know that but your dad told you that but i guess i would have had to come up in conversation you're growing up with a company with your name on it like literally with your name on it um you know to 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 manage that expectation of you to to manage that and just say hey you know the name is there but you gotta oh. you gotta it, it wasn't a foregone conclusion and uh you know at first i maybe didn't understand that Mm. Yeah, that's what the younger Shane would have uh, would have said. You know, like, what do you mean? I can't become president. <laughs> you, have to, you have to earn it. You have to show that you're capable of it, and uh, and 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 that's important when uh, you know because there's a lot of kids in this situation who uh, you know maybe not, don't have the company named after them, but you know they have the opportunity because it's a family owned and run business. Don't expect it. Don't expect it to be handed to you. You have to earn it. Yeah, I that's listen. That's great philosophy for life in general. You know, that's just everything. School, uh, young person as you're tra transitioning, people transitioning from one job to a career to another. Uh, just because you have it, why I I think people are out there experiencing that right now. People who've worked sure. for 25 years and they have PhDs and COO past titles, CFO titles, and they're out looking for work. And uh, and it's tough. Is uh, you have to go out and earn it again. And I, I don't say that disrespectfully. I'm just saying, um, you know, it's just kind of like playing hockey. I know you guys are big hockey fans. I see a lot of pictures with, with, the, with the Flames jerseys on. With your dad's, you know, you have to earn. You have to earn it. They just want to know what did you do on your last shift. That's what they want to know, right? Exactly. Um, right they want to know what you did on your last shift so i think that's uh, a great message that your dad uh, gave you and that's part of the legacy piece that he gave to you so i think that's good hey shane listen let's have some fun not that we hadn't have any <laughs> i mean <laughs> and i try to keep you i'm trying to keep this show under budget here with uh we were already past the hour so there you go uh and just so you know everybody i always looking for great sponsors and this one uh brought to me by my wife uh she has support, supports me all the time so i appreciate it <laughs> i just want to shout out to my beautiful I'm wife number one right she lets me do this thing. can you believe that she lets me do this i just love her to death for that so 
There's my sponsorship right there. Hey, let's have some fun. You know, uh, you know, this is going to work in many ways for me, but, uh, you know, most of the time when you connect with people on LinkedIn, you don't get to know them very well. Uh, but what I like about you, you're extremely transparent. So I appreciate that. Uh, but I still want to get inside the mind of Shane Wenzel. I want to understand a little bit more about him. And so, so I come up with something called this or that, this or that with Shane. All right. Wenzel, right. So I'll just name two things two things and you just pick one of them and it'll just give us an insight inside what's going through that mind right there. Matt would might want to know him. Might, he might go, wow, I didn't know that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he knows all these answers. I'm pretty sure he knows everything. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Here we go. Let's start with this one. One of my favorites, just so you know, whiskey or wine? Whiskey. <sighs> we, have so much, we have so much to talk about in a minute. <laughs> I know. I love that. I love that. Spider-Man or Batman? Batman. Oh, that was quick. Why is that? The car? <laughs> <laughs> no, for a lot of reasons. You know, I've, just, I've always been a fan of, uh, you know, of the Dark Knight and, you know, being an old comic book junkie. I mean, you know, yeah, I collected both of them, but, you know, I always kind of gravitated towards Batman. You know, he's a he's a complicated individual and he's, uh, you know, he's intelligent, you know, but he's uh, he's torn and uh, and he's. Uh, <sighs> He's prepared to be that leader that, uh, you know, and he's prepared to take on that role. Right. I, hey, I agree with that. I agree with that. And by the way, just everyone, just a piece of trivia. We didn't even get into this, but uh, you actually are a, uh, an artist, if I'm not mistaken. You, you've dabbled into this world of, of creating, uh, uh, what would it, animation, <laughs> animation, not cartoons. I don't want to say cartoons, animation. And I know that that's part of your background. You're actually a, an artistic person when it comes to animation. True or false? Uh, true. Uh, I think one of the biggest disappointments that my mother would tell you about me is that, A, I either didn't go into broadcasting or into comic book art. Ah, uh, broadcast. Well, the voice is there. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> <laughs> the voice is there. Just so you know. I can hear it now. See, you could do that with Matt and you can just say, brought to you by Shane Wenzel. My oh, voice. yeah. <laughs> I know you can turn on the midnight voice. <laughs> I know. I love that. I love <laughs> All right. Convertible or truck? Truck. Yeah. Right. Outdoors. I know you like uh, Montana, all that stuff. Uh, we're going out to get a bite to eat. Uh, Chinese food or Italian food? Italian. Uh -huh. Goes with the wine. No, I know you like whiskey, but goes with wine too. It uh, works either way. <laughs> <laughs> I've had whiskey with Chinese food. Who are we kidding? Or Italian food. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've had it for breakfast. Uh, how about this? I know you've traveled a lot, so I'm going to dig into this one further. But Europe or the Caribbean? Sorry, which ones? Europe in general or the Caribbean for oh, travel? Europe. Europe. Yeah, why is that? I love the history. And I love, uh, you know, I love just touring around. That's, uh, you know, even though, don't get me wrong, I mean, I love uh, I love a tropical beach somewhere, but, you know, I do love the fact that, you know, you, can, you, you there's an entirely different feeling in Europe when you uh, when you go over and you you just get a sense of the timelessness and and everything that's gone on and uh, and you can lose yourself for days, well, weeks, months, if you want to just traveling around. Yeah. I, I get that. I mean, the, the, the like, you know, for me again, Scotland, Ireland, for example, right. Going to taste whiskey tasting, things like exactly. that. You know, that, that kind of, uh, oh, I love that as well. Now uh, be careful on this one. Cause I know a secret story to this. So just so you know, Spartacus or gladiator. <laughs> that, why would that one be so hard? I mean, I love the movie gladiator, but I still, uh, you know, I might gravitate more towards Spartacus. Ah, oh, now why is that? Because I love I love Gladiator too, and I love Spartacus, but I love Gladiator. Yeah, go ahead. Why why Spartacus? I think you know because they, you know I mean there there is a story in itself, you know, and uh, you know the way he uh, you know he uh, you know he was on the outside. He uh, you know he had to liberate his people. He had to liberate his uh, his country, and uh, you know in the end, I mean it. Uh, you know I think in both cases it it, it obviously it ends poorly for the uh, for the hero, but you know it uh, it also shows that you know, that the, uh, the world can change with, uh, when the right people take, uh, take charge. Yeah. No, that, no, that's a very uh, cerebral answer. Uh, I knew the real reason, just so you know, uh, <laughs> found this. <laughs> oh my God. Wonderful world of social media. I uh, listen, I didn't put it out there. It wasn't me. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so I, I kind of knew the answer to this already. I was thinking, okay, and I heard Spartacus. Spartacus. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, that's very close to the gladiator uh, mask. That's for sure. There's a, mm -hmm. uh, that's very, very close. So, yeah, we're getting close. <laughs> Thought you'd enjoy that one. How about this? Sunrise or sunset? Sunset. Are you a morning person or evening person? You know, I'm, the evening, I'm the evening person. You know, I know that uh, you know, a lot of people think I'm a morning person. Uh, you know, the fact remains is I just don't sleep. You know, oh, I could I sleep for hours uh, in the night, wake up, and then sleep for hours in the evening. But I... Uh, I seem to hit my stride more at the end of the day and in the evening. Yeah, sunset. I got it. All right, uh, this is a tricky one for you. Uh, you have a gift for Matt. So you, this is a gift for Matt, but you're going to participate in this. A day sipping, uh, sorry, a day spinning vinyl records with Madonna or, <laughs> or a day sipping champagne around the piano with Elton John. No, no, spinning the vinyl. Spinning the vinyl. Spinning yeah. the vinyl. Yeah, is, why is that? You you love uh, you guys collect the records, things like that. Yeah, you like well, that. No, I, I I had a little bit when I was younger, but when I met Matt, he had this uh, this enormous collection of vinyl records, and oh. you know it's grown even more since he since we've been together, and that's just kind of what we do. I mean, if we're if we're having a night where we're having drinks, I mean, he's spinning the vinyl all over. Awesome. Yeah, there's nothing like vinyl, just so everyone knows from uh, as a musician and recording, a person who records, there's yeah. nothing like uh, vinyl just because the the waves, the sound waves, how it was recorded versus digital is very blocky. So anyway, your ear actually hears oh. it differently, right? <laughs> Have I heard this story before? Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I got to well, hold that's exactly. Up. That's exactly what Matt has said. He says it's just something about the air and the, and the mood and he said you don't get that on digital. You do not just, yeah, there's, and there's math behind that, but he's right about the feeling. It never doesn't go away. So there you go. Um, here's one for you. I, I love this one. Hope or freedom? Freedom. You said that quickly. Why is that? <laughs> I think people are just naturally attuned to hope, but I mean, freedom is the one thing that you can lose so easily. Yes. Agree. No right or wrong answer on that, but you mm -hmm. answered I love it. So finish this sentence for me, uh, my fine friend. Finish this one. I love my life because... I love my life because, well, I have some amazing people around me. You yeah, know, my family. Right? People. I mean, yeah, I agree with you 100%. Yeah, and you do have some great people around. We just showed some pictures of that, you know, so yeah, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I Listen, that's a mic drop, so I appreciate that. Shane Wenzel, listen, I knew when we first connected, this was going to be a cool, fun uh, 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 connection. And I so appreciate you wanting to do this and come on the show. Um, we're not finished right now because I know you're a whiskey guy. So <laughs> now just so everyone knows, it is past noon here. It is. <laughs> Wouldn't matter to me. It doesn't matter. Just so you know, uh, it's five o'clock somewhere in my world. And I know that uh, Shane, uh, you might have a whiskey there. Do you not? Or do you have a whiskey there? I don't know. I definitely have one ah! here. I love it. I love it. What's your go-to whiskey? I just, I saw, uh, just so everyone knows, I mean, it's not the, I, I asked him, I very last minute, I said, listen, hey, if you want to have a whiskey, let's have one. Uh, he yeah. goes, I don't think so. It's, it's like 11 o'clock. <laughs> Glenfiddich 15 year. Oh, nice. Yeah. That nice. one, uh, you know, even Matt will sit there and say, I don't know how you drink that turpentine, but you know, if this is what you like, then go for it. <laughs> oh, I know, right? Well, you know what? I'm going to join you. Just uh, let's just do a. I want to do a quick cheers with you. I just grabbed one randomly here. This is goes closer Love to it. A, this is a space side uh, Glen Murray. It's a it's a port cast finish. So uh, really like this guy uh, or gal. This one is a fantastic. Nice. You yeah. know, it's just you know, it's kind of for breakfast, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was thinking I was going to decide what one you pulled out uh, for it because I was ready to go the Petey way. I was ready to go to the Lagavulin way just in case, you know. So the Lagavulin is just like eating. You know, <laughs> it's just like digging in Scotland and eating. There's uh, the Italian so, food now. Right, right there. So I'm going to pour up a quick little cheers with you. Uh, I just want to do that with you right now. Thank you, brother. It was so nice cheers. to connect with you. Cheers to you, my fine friend. Cheers to you. And I want to say that... Um, I'm so happy we had this conversation. I want to uh, put up how people can connect with you here on LinkedIn. Uh, make sure you check out what Shane is doing. You're putting up some great content, my friend. So thank you for doing that. Absolutely. Using your platform as a force for good. I mean, that's what we're all supposed to be doing, or I certainly advocate for it. 
So I hope that uh, people will go and check it out. And of course, your company. I wish you great success with your company. I hope things kind of turn around. I think they will. I think 2022, obviously, I'm guessing will probably be the, the real rebound year for you. But let's hope that this year will be a, a turning point in 2021 for you as well. Hey, so far, so good. Let's just, you know, knock on wood and <laughs> keep it going from there. But Peter, honestly, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed this. Oh, I'm the, that's music to my ears. I appreciate that. Now, uh, everyone else out there, thank you for tuning in and watching. Uh, connect mm -hmm. with Shane. Um, connect with me, of course, if you wish to learn more about Shane. But go right to the source. Go right there. And Shane, I know you love uh, giving back and making a difference. So do I. Uh, so I, I'll, I'll end... Um, I'll end this this, uh, this uh, show with a quick little video about this little ball, this little ball that I picked up in Rwanda, right here. And uh, so everyone, listen, uh, just do what you can out there. Be kind to everybody. And um, yeah, just be kind out there. How about that? Shane, we'll see you on the other side, my friend. You bet, Peter. Good to see you. Yeah. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. So I found a new friend and uh, we traded uh, a pen um for this soccer ball and i thought it was really nice because i just gave him the pen because he'd been helping uh helping me throughout the day to learn uh, kinyarwanda and uh he's a very smart boy knows english very well very good english yes so i gave him a pen um which they love pens and um 15 10 15 minutes later he came back and gave me a ball for the trade so i just thought that was really really cool because i didn't ask for it so so um, yeah Pira. yeah so he gave me that so i'm really really happy about that and i'll be bringing this back to canada and uh yeah i thought it was awesome he's he's a really 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 clever kid he's going to be an english teacher professor yeah. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.